Hello friends, welcome to this video. This is Good Hacker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve little coding problem, string to integer, also known as a toy coding problem. A toy is a C++ built-in function. A toy stands for ASCII to integer. A toy is a helper function to pass an integer value in a string to integer. In many other programming languages, we may see some similar built-in function to perform the parsing process. So for example, in Java, uh, if we want to pass an a integer value in a string, we can simply use an integer.passin to pass an integer value to an integer. And we will get an integer value here. So for this problem, we need to write a function ourselves to perform the parsing process. So the major difficulties for this problem is that we need to carefully think about all possible input cases. For, for different situations, we may have a different string inputs. So for string inputs like uh, only contains some numerical characters, and some string inputs, uh, they may contain some non-numerical characters. And some string inputs, they may have some white spaces. And some string inputs may contain some value even greater than the max allowed value in uh, integer data type. So we need to list all possible uh, input cases and then we need to handle them one by one. And after that, we can reach to the final result. So here, I, just follow me. I, I will list, uh, I will list uh, all possible uh, cases. And uh, after that, you can uh, get uh, ideas how to solve this, uh, solve this coding problem. So uh, let's uh, simply list the uh, the normal case the first. So for a string that only contains uh, numerical characters, we can simply pass it to an integer value. And uh, a more complex situation, if we have a string that contains some uh, white spaces before or between or after the numerical characters, we need to first remove those white spaces first. And after that, we can get the integer value for this string. And another situation that we may have a string followed by a non-numerical non characters. And we have a string that have a separate integer part. So for that case, for this problem, we only need to keep the first integer part. So that means whenever we encounter a non-numerical character, we can just stop passing. And moreover, we may have a situation uh, there's a positive or negative sign before the numerical characters. So in that case, for positive number, we can just uh, return the integer value. And for the negative uh, value, we need to keep the negative sign. And one more situation. So we may have a situation that we have a value contains uh, a lot of digits that's even greater than the max allowed value in, uh, in integer. So that means it's even greater than the 2 to 31 minus 1, the greatest value allowed in integer data type. And uh, similarly, 
we may have as a negative value contains many 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 digits and uh, it's even smaller than the integer value integer mean value minimum value allowed that's a uh, even smaller than the minus 2 to 31 so in that case for the positive number we only need to return integer the max value and for the negative we just need to return integer the main value so these are the all possible string inputs so after listing all these cases we can uh, derive our solution to the actual code to solve this problem so uh, let's go back to the problem uh, I will demonstrate in coding in Java to solve this problem so uh, it's a good coding behavior to uh, make some validation check first so we check whether the string is a valid uh, string input so if this string is uh, not exist or if this string is a uh, uh, just an empty string so we just need to return zero in this case and then we can handle our normal case first so uh, we will need to introduce a variable called the z result and we initiate it with a double data uh, type and uh, that's a final answer we need to return for this function but uh, we need to do a conversion so we initiate with a double data type and uh, finally we need to return the in integer data type so uh, you may wondering why we need to initiate with a data type uh, data type. Um, I will explain this to you later and uh, after I finish this code you can understand why we need to do that. So for the normal case, so normal case is just like uh, we have a string contains only numerical characters so um, in that case we just need to add the digit value to the result to add up together to make a new integer so we work through the each character in this string so we initiate with the i variable and uh, we add the digit value to this result so digit value we will have a local variable called digit value here so how we get this digit value so it's simply the character we are visiting minus zero character so each character is a storing ASCII table they have a, a corresponding ASCII code so for a uh, character like 9 uh, so the ASCII code just uh, so the digit value we can get we can just use it to minus 0 to get its uh, ASCII uh, value So we add this digit value to the result. Uh, so we handle the normal case. And then remember, we may have some case that we have some white spaces. We need to remove those white spaces, spaces first. So we can simply call a string dot trim function to remove white spaces. And the next step, we need to handle 
uh, positive and the negative sign. So we have uh, some situation that uh, contains a string, uh, contains a character with a positive or negative sign. We will need to uh, introduce two variables here. One is a Boolean variable called is negative. Initiate with a false by default. And uh, another one is called start index. So start index is a index that uh, first uh, numerical numerical character. So we need to uh, update the normal case here. So the, the position we need to do the parsing process is a star index. Uh, because uh, when we have a situation, have a, a negative or positive sign, and we need to, uh, so the first numerical character is actually followed by that positive or negative sign. So we need to update the start index. So if the first character if the first character is a positive or negative sign we need to move the start index right further and especially for the negative sign we also need to update our negative value to true. And we have a variable to store whether it's a positive or negative number. So if it's a negative number, so when we, uh, just before we return the result, we need to do the reverse. So we add a negative sign before the result. And uh, another situation is that we need to handle non-numerical situation. So uh, when we work through the, the characters in the string, so if we find that the character is out of the numerical range, that simply means that it's less than the its ASCII order is a less than zero, or its ASCII order is greater than nine character. So we need to stop the passing process. We stop the passing process. We jump out of this for loop. And um, there's still one more situation we need to handle it. That uh, out of the integer range, so we need to handle out of integer range case. So if uh, the result is greater than the integer um, max value, we just need to return integer um, max value. And if the result is even smaller than the main value, we return integer uh, main value here. So 
Now you should see the benefit to use a double data type first. Why we need to use that? Because double can store more digits than the integer. So if the number, so if the string contains a value uh, that's a, more than the digits can be stored in an integer data type, we can use a, a double to store that. So we first store in a double variable. If we find that it's already have more digits than the integer max or min value, we, we just return the integer max value or min value. And uh, at the last, we convert it back to the integer. Okay, so this is all the codes here. And uh, before submit, let's quickly work through this process. So validation check first and uh, introduce a result, remove the white space and hand handle the positive and the negative same situation. And uh, we set up our uh, start index position to handle the normal case. So if we encounter a non-numerical character, we break the rule and we store the digit value to the result. If it's a negative uh, result, we do the reverse. If the result already out of the uh, max value or main value can be stored in the integer, we return the max or main value. And finally, return the result. Okay. Uh, let's click the submit button. If there's no typo, we should get the accepted. Yeah, very cool. So we get the accepted answer. So our code is uh, very correct. And uh, and uh, you we went through the this process step by step. So we handle the different cases. So uh, from this process, you know that by handling the different cases, we can solve this problem. Okay, uh, I hope you can get a better understanding about this uh, problem. And uh, thank you for your watching. Uh, so I'm good taker. So if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, just feel free to leave any uh, leave some comments under the video. I will take a look at and keep improving the uh, tutorial video tutorial quality. Um, and besides, um, I will keep upload uh, keep solving the coding problems and uh, upload uh, new video tutorials. So if you um, uh, you can also uh, welcome you to subscribe my channel and. Uh, if you I upload if I upload a new video tutorials, you will get a notification. Okay, um, so keep making progress, and uh, thank you for your watching. So, see you next time. Bye bye.